Hi, welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. We've done demand. Today we're going to look at supply. If you've understood demand curves, then you'll find supply curves pretty straightforward. Let's start off with our definition of an individual supply curve. An individual supply curve tells us, given the price, how much of the product the person would like to sell, holding everything else constant. A couple of pointers here. Notice again we have the price taking assumption built in. Supply curves assume that the sellers take the price as given. So as soon as you draw a supply curve, you're making that price taking assumption. Secondly, just like with our demand curve, our supply curve looks at what the person would like to do. So the supply curve looks at somebody's plans, looks at what they would propose to do, not necessarily what they can actually do. And thirdly, it's holding everything else constant. What do we mean by everything else? Well, here's some examples. It could be the input prices, the amount that you have to pay to get the inputs that you need to produce whatever you're selling. It could be the technology that you're using in your production. Or it could be your expectations. If you think prices are going to be higher tomorrow, you may prefer to wait, sell more tomorrow, and sell less today. Let's focus on our Apple seller, Angel. Angel runs an Apple store at the local market. She sells apples by the kilogram. And if the price of apples is too low, let's say less than $2 per kilogram, then it's not even worth her while opening the shop. As she sells more apples, she needs to buy more apples. Apples are her input as well as what she sells. She needs to buy more, in, more of that input, her apples, from the farmers. Also, if she sells more apples, she can't just do it by herself, so she needs to hire some more staff. And also, if she sells more apples, she needs more space to store the apples. She gets more at the beginning of the day, and she has to keep that inventory through the day. So she's now going to need to rent some more space to store the apples if she wants to sell more apples. So let's start drawing Angel's supply curve of apples. On the vertical axis, we're going to have the price in dollars. On the horizontal axis, we're going to have the quantity of apples. It's going to be in thousands of kilograms. What do we know about Angel's supply? Well, remember, if the price of apples is less than $2 per kilogram, it's not worth Angel's time opening her shop. So if the price is anywhere down here, less than $2 per kilogram, then she'll prefer to sell no apples. Or in other words, her supply curve is just going to be the vertical axis. As the price of apples goes up, Angel will want to sell some apples. Let's suppose the price of apples is $4 per kilogram, and at that price, Angel would like to sell 5,000 kilograms of apples per day. Then, this blue dot is a point on Angel's supply curve. Given the price of $4 per kilogram, Angel would like to sell 5,000 kilograms of apples. What if the price of apples is even higher? Let's say the price of apples is $9 per kilogram. Suppose at that price, it becomes worthwhile for Angel to hire somebody to help her out in the stall so that she can concentrate on buying the best apples from the farmers and it's worth her while to hire a bit more space to store the apples during the day. So at a price of $9 per kilogram, Angel would like to sell 9,500 kilogram of apples per day. So this blue dot is another point on Angel's supply curve. We can keep going. Suppose the price of apples is even higher, say $12 per kilogram. Well, in that situation, Angel would like to sell 10,000 kilograms of apples per day. So we have another point on Angel's supply curve, given by this blue dot up here. So now we've got four points. At a price of $2, she wants to sell zero apples. At a price of $4, she wants to sell 5,000 kilograms of apples per day. At a price of $9, she wants to sell 9,500 kilograms of apples per day. And at a price of $12, she wants to sell 10,000 kilograms of apples per day. We can now join up all those points 
And if we do so, we get the black curve here, and that is simply Angel's supply curve of apples. For any price, given that price, it tells us how many thousands of kilograms of apples Angel would like to sell in a day. When we drew Angel's supply curve, we were assuming a number of things were fixed. For example, we were assuming the cost of her stall, the rent she pays, was fixed. We were assuming that the price of labour for a shop assistant, we took that as fixed. Most importantly, we were taking as fixed the price that Angel has to pay the farmers for the apples, the price of her input. So let's ask a simple question. What happens if the wholesale price of apple, i.e. the price that Angel has to pay farmers to buy their apples, goes up? Here we've got Angel's original supply curve again. That's a supply curve drawn when, say, the price that she has to pay the farmers for apples is a dollar per kilogram. Now, let's suppose that the price that Angel has to pay the farmers to buy the apples that she then on sells to customers rises from one dollar per kilogram to a dollar twenty per kilogram. What happens to Angel's supply curve? The higher input price that Angel has to pay for the apples means that given any price that she can sell the apples for, her input price or her input costs have gone up, so Angel will probably prefer to sell less apples than before. For example, at a price of $9 per kilogram, Angel may only want to sell, say, 9,000 kilograms of apples per day, rather than the 9,500 kilograms that she would have liked to sell when her input costs were lower. And similarly, at a price of $4 per kilogram, rather than selling 5,000 kilograms of apples per day, Angel may only want to sell, say, 3,000 kilograms of apples per day. And indeed, if the price is, say, less than perhaps $2.20 per kilogram, then it may now not even be worthwhile for Angel to open up her apple stall. So now we've got some points on Angel's supply curve when the price of the input, the price of apples, has gone up. We have a point down here where the price is $2.20 and Angel would now prefer to sell no apples. We've got a point up here where the price is $4 per kilogram and Angel wants to sell fewer apples than before. And similarly, we've got a point up here at $9 per kilogram, where again, Angel wants to sell fewer apples than before. So Angel's supply curve has shifted upwards when the price of her input has gone up. And we can draw her new supply curve, just like this. And that new black supply curve is Angel's supply curve when she pays farmers $1.20 per kilogram for apples. You'll notice that that new supply curve is everywhere to the left of the old supply curve, reflecting that as Angel's input price goes up, given any price of her output, given any price that she can sell apples to customers, she will prefer to sell less apples. Angel isn't the only apple seller. Let's suppose there's another apple seller called Ashish. Ashish has a different supply curve to Angel. For example, let's suppose that if apples are less than $2 per kilogram, just like Angel, Ashish would prefer to close his stall rather than open it. If the price is $4 a kilogram, however, Ashish would like to sell 3,500 kilograms of apples per day. And if the price is, say, $12 per kilogram, Ashish would like to sell 5,500 kilograms of apples per day. So we've got three points on Ashish's demand curve. We could keep asking the question, Hey Ashish, given this price of apples, how many would you like to sell? And we could get more points, but three will do us for now. We can draw Ashish's supply curve for apples by joining up all those points. So this blue curve is Ashish's supply curve for apples. Now let's suppose that Angel and Ashish are our only two apple sellers, and we want to work out 
the market supply curve for apples. Given the price of apples, how many apples would Ashish and Angel in total like to sell? So now I've drawn Angel and Ashish's supply curves on the same set of axes. The black supply curve is Angel's and the blue supply curve is Ashish's supply curve for apples. How do we work out the market supply curve for apples? Well remember, just like with demand, we work out the market supply by horizontally adding the individual supply curves. For example, at a price of $2 per kilogram, Ashish wants to produce nothing, Angel wants to produce nothing, so in total, they want to produce nothing. What about at a higher price? Let's say at the price of $4 per kilogram. If you remember, Ashish would like to sell 3,500 kilograms of apples. At a price of $4 per kilogram, Angel would like to sell 5,000 kilograms of apples. So in total, they would like to sell 3.5 plus 5, that's 8,500 kilograms of apples. So this point up here, price of $4 per kilogram, and sales of 8,500 kilograms of apples is a point on our market supply curve. Now again, we could keep on going, but the two points will do us. Let's draw our market supply curve. It's going to go through the point, $2 and zero apples. It's going to track along and go up through the point, $4 per kilogram and 8,500 kilograms of apples. And it's going to keep going up. And at every price, it's going to be the horizontal addition of Ashish's blue supply curve and Angel's black supply curve. Put them together, and you'll get the market supply curve as given in purple. So this purple line is our market supply curve. Notice that it's flatter than the individual supply curves, and because it's it has more sales at any price than any individual supply curve. It must lie to the right of both Ashish and Angel's supply curves. And the market supply curve tells us, given the price of apples and holding fixed all of those other factors such as input price, expectations, technology and so on, that purple market supply curve is telling us, given the price, how many apples in total would sellers like to sell? Now we've got demand, we've got supply. In the next presentation, we're going to put them together and we're going to predict the price of apples. We're going to answer our question, where does the price of apples come from? See you next time.